something to say. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Project Shadow. My name's Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my new book, Crucify My Love, which is out at Amazon because our lord and master, hallowed be their name, demands exclusivity for various perks like money. So it's there. <laughs> but you can get a print book or an ebook. And episode two of the podcast, Mask of the Gods, which is the, me, well, it's me reading it, came out today. Well, yesterday. So, there you go. <laughs> That's four chapters out. It's two chapters an episode. Hey. Um, yeah, it's still not in Apple Podcasts, though, and I don't understand that. So keep an eye on my Twitter feed. It's now on Google Podcasts, so if that's your thing, it's there now. So if you go to Mask of the Gods, I'm sorry, uh, well, you can go to maskofthegods.com or you can go to anchor.fm slash maskofthegods and you'll find links to everywhere that it is. And I will announce when it's up on Apple Podcasts eventually because, yeah, that's the thing. Apparently, this time. But today, mon frere, I, I would like to talk to you about utter weirdness and silliness. Because I'd like to talk about comics. Not a specific comic in general. You know, in specific... Well, that was a sentence that just did not want to exist in this world. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Um, not about a specific comic or anything. Or even a specific comic maker. Though I will be mentioning two of them. It's more the idea of comics. The er comic The oeuvre that is all of comicdom because dc universe finally announced that this april they're basically going to be putting up the back catalog on the app they've been slowly like trickling it out and they're now saying that they'll have over twenty thousand comics in april in their collection and their little announcement thing showed some of the like big hitters Kingdom Come and Red Sun Superman and Death in the Family, which is already up. And, you know, all of those. And, like, they showed some things that looked to me like Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. And that's something we can talk about on the podcast. Because I love you, Alan Moore. I will never say anything bad about you. Don't put the whammy on me. <laughs> Please. Anywho. Um, I, I wanted to talk about comics and how they've kind of affected me over the years and my like sadness that people don't read them in the volume that they should. Like one of the things that I've learned over the years is there are a lot more people acquainted with the idea of comics than there are people who actually read them. And now, Oh my goodness. Now is the perfect time to get into comics because between Marvel unlimited and DC universe, that's what seventeen dollars a month for or seventeen eighteen dollars a month. You get access to their entire back catalog for all of the Marvel and DC comics, and you get access to new comics for Marvel six months after their debut, and for DC they're going to do it a year after. Personally, I don't care about the wait. I'm not. I don't care. I, I can wait. If you're into getting them new, more power to you. That's fine. I'm still catching up on stuff that I missed over the years because I, I may have mentioned on the show a couple times that, you know, like me and money, we, we aren't friends. Like I want to be friends and I try to be as nice to them as I can be. But for some reason, they just don't like hanging out in my bank account and, you know, just bringing all their friends over and uh, my milkshake's just not good enough for the money. But I try. And as such, comics have been a really difficult thing for me over the years to keep up with, because a new comic, I don't even know what they are now. 
last time I bought comics, I think they were like five bucks an issue. And considering there are a lot of different series I want to go after, paying like 18 bucks a month to have all the comics, that, that's a much better deal for someone like me. Because I get to read all the comics. Dude, if I just bought the Star Wars comics that I read every month, it would be more than paying for both DC on DC Universe and Marvel Unlimited. So yeah, if, if you're going to become a comic book reader like me, it's definitely cheaper doing it this way. And hopefully it is sustainable for them as a market. But I think that's one of the things that keeps a lot of people out of the comic sphere. Well, it's two things. Knowing where to start reading and, you know, the cost. Because... You know, paying five bucks a lot for a lot of different series every month, that really adds up. And now you don't have to do that. So you don't have an excuse. Well, you might have an excuse. But still, you shouldn't. You should read. You should read some comics, darn it. But why? Why am I so, like, insistent on this? And it's not just because I have this, like, latent fantasy that one day I'll meet an artist who will work with me and together we will develop and create a comic book series and it will be wonderful and fun and people might actually read it and like it and my life will be full of meaning and purpose and yeah no no it's not that comics are weird and that is the greatest thing ever i, I don't i'm not going to say that he originated that phrase but I associate that phrase with Movie Bob and Bob Chipman. And it's the greatest way to explain comics. I love stories. And I like really exaggerated epic stories. And comics are a great place for that. But because so many comics come out every month, and so many comics have come out in these variant series... Well, it's a place where you have to get very experimental with story and character and really take some weird risks and do some strange, strange things. And if you're into stories and storytelling at all, that to me is the magic of comics and why they're worth reading. Because, you know, I never wondered what it would be like if Batman got a power ring but I don't have to wonder because they they did that in the comics and there's two different versions of it. Well, three actually, because Batman with a green power ring and the will of the Titans, you have Batman with a yellow power ring being able to wield fear upon the universe. And of course, ba Batman with the black power ring. And I've, you know, it's not one of those things that I really think about. Like, what if my, what if Batman actually had superpowers other than his ability to just, you know, deduce from the facts at hand? It'd be the caped Sherlock Holmes. But they needed some stories. And so we, we get to see Batman with crazy powers from time to time. I think the most interesting one for me is in a series an event that they did where the main superheroes from the DC comics ended up replacing various members of the new gods and Batman gets his hands on Metron's chair and basically becomes the god of truth and justice because he knows all and so you take the greatest crime fighter detective of all time and basically give him omnipotence? Yeah, that's not a good thing. That's really not a good thing. And there's a comic for that. And you might be thinking to yourself, I don't need that in my life. But you do. And you don't know that you do. Because we're going to get here. This, think about comics as your preparation for the future world of streaming services. Because... 
with everybody making stories and making a bunch of stories and a whole bunch of series that are ongoing, they're going to get weird too. I mean, think about the chilling adventures of Sabrina, which we, ga gauging by your reactions when I talk about it, we all love. And I am going to be watching part two soon. I've just been saving it because my brain's been fried with all the book release stuff. But that was inspired by a comic, which is one of the reasons why it is so weird. And especially if you're a writer or a creative person, getting to see some of the strange places that comics go to. Like, did you ever wonder what would happen if Luke Skywalker found him in a, himself in a village full of force vampires that were a threat to the universe? You don't have to wonder. There's a comic for that. And by the way, there's a canon comic for that. Meaning that actually happened in the life of the actual Luke Skywalker that you see in the movies. Yeah, <laughs> that's a thing that happened. You can read that. You don't know that you want to read that, but you can. And I really feel like they did that because they were wondering if they should try to bring the Yuzhang Vong in. Because they keep hinting that they may be out there and using some of the catchphrases and terms that were used prior to the Yuzhang Vong invasion. And I don't think they want to do it, but so they're looking for different ways to do something like that for the great threat out in the unknown territories. I don't know. We'll see. But when you actually start playing around in these wonderfully, wonderfully weird worlds and seeing how mediums like this have changed and i mean changed because that's one of the glorious things that you can do now is go back and read these comics from the 1950s and 60s 70s 80s 90s aughts and up to the teens and see how these stories have so completely changed like one of my favorite characters is doc fate dr fate in DC Comics. I just love him. I don't think he's used enough, and I don't think that they off always use him in the right way. But he's one of my favorite comics. Comic book heroes. And I got the great joy when I signed up for DC Universe to go back and read his original appearance. And it's probably one of the worst stories I have ever read in my life because he's kind of a superhero I mean he just kind of like puts on the golden helmet and the suit and then punches people a lot and punches them and punches them and keeps punching them because they're bad guys who need to be punched <laughs> and you could tell that they just like they, okay, Superman was huge. Superman was huge. Okay, that was a good one. Okay, well, Batman was huge. That's that. Okay, that's cool. Wonder Woman was huge. That's that's good. What else can we do? I don't know. Let's do a guy named Doctor Fate. And I don't even think he could fly. I don't remember him even being able to fly in the original run that he appeared in. But there he was in all of his costumed glory in some of the weirdest punch em ups like in one issue he throws a flower vase at a guy's face because he's dr fate and then quips i bet you didn't see that coming because it's funny because he's dr fate do you get it do you get it yeah comics are weird and comics are crazy but you have to remember somebody liked that enough to revive the character and continue doing things with him. <laughs> like you never know what people used to be into and what people used to like. I got into comics when I was a kid and I, I still love them today, especially for their just bizarre idiosyncrasies and the strange things that different writers and artists bring into a story that you don't really know why they're there and the pandering attempts that they do to bring in each generation. Like there's a reason Robin had to die because they decided to go nineties extreme with Robin in the eighties in the late eighties. And nobody wanted that. 
Nobody, nobody, nobody wanted, nobody wanted Jason Todd. Nobody, not a single person ever wanted Jason Todd. And like most of the people of my generation, I was horrified with the way he died because it's graphic, but I was kind of happy he was gone. And that's a fun emotion to experience because, yeah, it's weird, like all comics. So one of the things that I want to do is start talking about comics more on this show. And I actually want to go back and look at a lot of the classics and, you know, really play around with them. Look at, I was thinking of doing the Phoenix Saga since apparently that movie is actually coming out. And I'm troubled by that because the Phoenix Saga is one of my formational memories of comic book love. And... I know they're not going to do anything as completely and utterly bizarre as what happened in the comics, because, I mean, you, if you're not familiar with Bob Chipman saying comics are weird, I, I just want to just, like, have a button that I can just press so you can hear his comics are weird, because they are. And the problem with them making them into movies is they quite often want to dull that weirdness and tap it down. And if you don't know what you're missing, then you don't know that they've taken it away from you. And that's why for me, it's so beneficial to have that experience with the comics where you've read them and you understand them and you get to see when things are actual improvements like guardians of the galaxy that I kind of liked Yondu when I was a kid because he made some um, guest appearances in a couple comics that I did read. But he was an archer. Like, he had a magic bow with a magic arrow and a really big sailfish thing on the top of his head. Yeah. He, he was as weird as all get out. And I actually found the Yandu in the movie kind of off-putting because he didn't remind me of the one from the comic until I fell in love with him because, let's face it, he's awesome. But being able to see those versions of characters and how they change over the years, and this is something that comic book readers should really be much better at, and hopefully, now that we have these readings, I don't know what to call them, book streaming services, these book services that we can sign on to and read all the back catalogs, it won't be so obnoxiously problematic every time DC or Marvel decide, hey, we're going to switch up this character for a little bit. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but Azrael was Batman for a while, and he's a homicidal serial killer. Like, that's a thing that happened in the comics for a while. And those comics are interesting, and you kind of get to see what would happen if Batman went, like, completely unleashed and did some of the things that you often hear people complaining that he doesn't do. And it's it's not a pretty sight, and it's not a good thing. But they explored that in the comics. And at least I didn't get all upset about it because I realized how many times Batman had changed over the years that I had been reading him. And yeah, this was going to come and it was going to go because no change to a comic book character is ever permanent. With the exception of Superman being able to fly. I mean, I really think that's the last time there was a permanent, like a really permanent, permanent change to a main character in a comic book series. Because the original Superman couldn't fly. He could, if you remember the whole, he can leap over a building in a single bound. Yeah, that was his original superpower, and eventually, on the TV show, I believe, it was either the TV show or the serial, they gave him the, the ability to fly, and then that got put into the comics. But these changes are very rarely permanent. Very rarely permanent. Like, that's one of the few permanent changes that I've seen. And yes... While Oliver Queen may be all about Felicity Smoke now, because they created Felicity Smoke for the TV series, eventually he and Black Canary are going to be a thing again, because 
eventually they're going to reset back to where they were. And I believe in the last reboot they did, they, we, we went back to Oliver Queen and Black Canary being a thing. Because that's what happens. They play around with the characters. They do weird and wacky things. And then the order comes down and the great reset button of the universe gets hit. And we're basically back to the characters we originally had. That's how comic books work. That's the cycle of comics. And since we're living in a world with a thousand remakes and a thousand reboots, I mean, think about how many versions of the X-Men have come out just in my life from the original animated series to X-Men Evolution. And I'm just talking about in media. I'm not even talking in comics, right? X-Men Evolution. There were a couple, there was at least one other X-Men cartoon that I'm missing in there. And then we had the X-Men movies, which, let's be honest, they kind of rebooted the franchise for each movie because the characters did change between films. And then you had First Class and those movies, which kind of changed things each time. And now that Disney has their hands on it, you know it's going to be rebooted again so the X-Men can be in the MCU. And that is the way it goes. And while that used to be a natural cultural cycle where we would take our heroic characters and rework them and rework them, I mean, how many times have you read something that's a version of a Shakespeare story? Well, Shakespeare stories are versions of older stories. I mean, that's just how culture works in the cultural cycle of things. Now that we have companies that have these brands that they want to preserve, you know, Disney kind of canceled the Ridley Scott alien movie and then they said that oh by the way we will have a new alien movie coming out because of course they will they don't want to lose the trademark to alien they want to be the only ones that can call a movie that and so we're going to get more alien movies and hopefully better ones because the mouse will crack down and not let ridley scott do stupid things like he's been doing continuously with Prometheus and Covenant, and uh, uh, I'm done. We all know that's a lie. And eventually it's going to get rebooted, and we're going to get reset, and we're going to go again. It's kind of like with the Dune movie. And if you want to prepare yourself for that, this is comics are one of the greatest places to do that. Because it's happened so many times. And you start learning which eras are your favorites, which artists drew the characters the way that you liked, which storylines were the ones that you enjoyed. And that is the lens that we're going to have to look at all media going forward. Because one day, Sabrina will end. And then it will be rebooted and a new Sabrina will come our way. And will she be the dark and scary Satan witch? Or will she be a lighthearted, fun, hippie chick again? Who knows? Only time will tell. But we need to be psychologically preparing ourselves for this. Because when I look at how we, and I'm using this in the grand cultural we, on the internet, freak out about every little thing. You know what? If you don't like the Michael Bay Transformers, that's okay. You know how many versions of the Transformers there's been over the years? I didn't particularly like the Beast Wars. But we got through it. And I'm trying to watch the Unicron Trilogy now, but it is not easy. I loved Prime. Eh, Robots in Disguise was okay. But that's the thing. I can talk about them as what they are as separate things because I know that they are separate things and it doesn't matter how much I like or don't like this particular iteration because in a couple years the order is going to come down and everything's going to be rebooted everything's going to be refreshed because we need new toys we need new fans we need to bring the kids in which is why to me it is hilarious when comic book fans get all bent out of shape of Why is there a female Iron Man now? Don't you understand? The word is Iron Man. Yeah. 
just wait a little bit. Tony Stark will be back. And you know what? Tony Stark's back. Like, he didn't have to wait long. Because they're going to try things. They're going to try all kinds of things. And sometimes they're great and sometimes they're not. But we have to enculturate ourselves to expect this constant cycle of reboot and rehash and re-envisioning the histories of these characters that we know and love. And comics are seriously one of the best ways to do that. One of my favorite book, books that I have in this house is DC hired Stan Lee and basically had him do his version of the DC character. So we get to see his version of Batman, his version of Superman, his version of Wonder Woman, his version of Green Lantern. And they're very much the Stan Lee versions of each of these. And I really want the Stan Lee Green Lantern to be a thing. And they kind of made it into thing in Earth 2 for a little while. Which made me very happy. But they come and they go. And this is the great meditative lesson that you get from comics. Especially when you're in them for any particular period of time. The characters that you love are good and bad they're like what you remember and they're different from what you remember they are all things to all people and eventually they will be the thing that you wish they were again and i kind of feel like comics are the greatest way to learn that lesson things change people change but the core identities always re-emerge they'll always come back and we'll get to see them for what they are and we need to learn that because <laughs> seriously if i have to hit sit through one more fan outrage because the there, there are women ghostbusters or captain marvel is coming out or any of this other crap it's just <sighs> You know, there's going to be a new Batman, like, really soon, because Ben Affleck's not going to play Batman anymore. And you know they're not going to go forever without a new Batman movie. So, that's happening. Like, this sense of permanence that we've put on these fictitious characters, we need to let it go. And if you want to enter a wonderfully weird fantasy land where no character is ever the same for the extended period of time that you want them to be, that's comics. And now you know, not only have access to the Marvel, but the DC. And Comixology actually offers a third deal if you want to get in on that, that is a lot of other comics. Like when I looked at it, they had like the Steven Universe comics and um, a lot more indie comics. So, you know, when I could have fit it in my budget, I'm probably going to bring that one back too. So I have access to pretty much all comics, but don't have money to fit that one in right now. But you should definitely, if you've ever been interested in this subject at all, you now is the time. This is not a paid endorsement by any of these people. It's just... I'm so excited that I'm now living in a day and age when I can read all of this, all of these wonderful stories and terrible stories. And to be honest, the terrible stories are sometimes my favorites because, oh, when they're bad, they're, they're, they're so bad. They're so bad. They're bad in a way that is just almost precious that somehow that got out into the world. And as a writer, it makes me feel so much better about my writing. Because, as I was saying earlier about Dr. Fate, as much as I love him, I will never write a story as bad as his original issues. I, I, maybe if I got really drunk and wrote a story, never edited it, and just published it. But, yeah. It's a good ego boost. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed this. I just wanted to do an ode to comics and why I think they're amazing and a wonderful learning tool for society, for life, and for creativity. 
If you did, and the app that you're listening to me on allows you to rate either this episode or the podcast in, in general, please do so. That helps me out a lot. That tells the algorithm to share me with more people. If you got a dollar, you can pass my way down in the show notes. You will see a link that says community support. If you click that, you can join the project at the $1, $5, or $10 levels. That helps out a lot. It pays for what I do. And I'd really be grateful. If you don't have the money right now or just don't feel like joining the project, that's fine. I tr- Trust me, I'm, I'm really fine with that. I understand. But if you know somebody that you think would enjoy this show, especially since I'm probably, like I said, going to start scheduling some uh, classic comic breakdowns in here from time to time, definitely share the podcast with them. That helps out a lot, too. If you want to get in touch with me, Twitter, Twitter's the place. I'm C.E. Dorset on Twitter. You can also go to anchor.fm, download the Anchor app. Once you've installed it, follow Project Shadow. Then you can click the little voice message button. Keep it clean so I can use it on the show, but you can leave a question, a comment, or a topic you would like to hear discussed on the show. And if there is any classic DC or Marvel story you'd like me to go into, that would be a really good place to share that and to share your opinions of it. That'd be awesome, because I'd really like this to be more our show. Yeah. If you want to find links to everything I do, just head over to projectshadow.com. Anyway, until next time, don't forget, have the fun. Bye.